Okay, so thank you very much, Professor Kumas, for your very kind introduction. Uh, my name is Li Zhao. Uh, I'm from uh, School of Medicine, Shuzhou University uh, in China. Uh, so today, uh, it's my great honor to give a lecture about Chinese culture uh, in, at, at Kyoto University. Uh, so the title of my presentation is Drug Discovery in China from traditional Chinese medicine to emerging nanomedicine. Uh, my lecture uh, mainly uh, consists of uh, four parts. Uh, introduction, uh, uh, evolution of drug di uh, discovery in China, summary and outlook, and uh, finally I will give you a brief introduction of Shuzhou, the city I, uh, I am living in, and. Uh, uh, the Suzhou University, the university uh, now I'm working, I'm working for. Uh, introduction. So the history of human being is, uh, uh, is just the history of fighting against the various uh, disease, diseases. Uh, every day, millions of uh, people's uh, lives are threatened by serious diseases. diseases. Uh, such as uh, cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease. Uh, therefore, the discovery of uh, efficient drugs is uh, very crucial to uh, win this war against uh, diseases. And today, my topic is about the drug di discovery in China. So, as you know, China is a, a big country in the west uh, of Japan. Uh, so China ha has a total area of 9.6 million square kilometer, uh, a population of about uh, 1.4 billion. And uh, China has a very long history of uh, civilization of o over 5,000 years. Uh, I will introduce uh, uh, the evolution of uh, drug di uh, discovery. Uh, from uh, traditional ch Chinese medicine, uh, so several thousand years ago, to uh, currently emerging uh, nanomedicine. So, as a, as a historic uh, country, China uh, was one of the first uh, country to have a medical culture. Uh, in comparison with uh, 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 Western medicine. Chinese medicine takes a, a far different uh, approach. Uh, during this 5,000 years, uh, it formed a unique knowledge of medical science and the theory, theory including uh, qi. It's, in English, we call this uh, energy floor, and also yin, yang, and wu xing theory. Uh, so I think it's totally different from the Western medicine. Uh, the prescription of uh, Chinese medicine uh, is called Chinese herbs. So we, in Chinese, we call it zhong uh, yao. In Japanese, uh, probably, we can call it a uh, 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 The ancient Chinese people uh, looked for drugs from a uh, natural source. Uh, especially from a, a variety of uh, plants. Uh, for example, the leaves, flowers, roots, and even the bugs uh, of the plants. So that is why the, uh, we call this kind of drug uh, herbs. Uh, some of the prescription of Chinese medicine also use uh, parts of animal and the, uh, even minerals for uh, drugs. Uh, for example, uh, this uh, deer horn and the uh, turtle's uh, seals, and also this amber are very valuable uh, Chinese uh, herbs. It costs a lot, I think. Um, and uh, some very toxic uh, minerals, for example, this uh, arsenic trioxide, everybody knows it's a very toxic compound. And, but uh, uh, in ancient China, and uh, even now, so many doctors 
uh, try to use uh, this uh, arsenic trioxide to uh, treat leukemia. Uh, this is a very uh, serious uh, blood disease. Uh, Chinese uh, herbalists uh, record the property and the efficacy of uh, uh, herbs uh, to form a large number of uh, literatures, uh, many of which are hand handed uh, on generation by generation until now. One of the uh, oldest uh, literature of uh, Chinese herb uh, was compiled more than 2,000 years ago. Uh, Sen Nong Ben Chao Jing and Ben Chao Gang Mu are, are two um, are most uh, important and classic books, uh, so which are uh, still on the shelf of many Chinese doctors. Uh, so this, these two books uh, collected uh, more than, I think, more than 5,000 different kind of uh, uh, herbs. <coughs> Uh, previously, Chinese people used to make uh, made, made, made their herb into uh, decoctions or, or large uh, round pears uh, to drink or eat. Uh, however, so this, uh, these are too difficult for children and the Western people. So to address this uh, issue, uh, uh, currently, uh, Chinese herbs are usually uh, produced to uh, sweet creams and uh, also smaller uh, pears. It's much easier to uh, take by patient. <coughs> and uh, right now we can uh, find uh, many drug stores of uh, Chinese herbs all over the world. So one of the most famous uh, Drug store of Chinese herbs in Beijing is uh, Tong Ren Tang. It has a history of more than 300 years. And uh, until now, it's still uh, selling uh, many kind of uh, traditional Chinese uh, herbs. Uh, in Hong Kong uh, also, there are many uh, traditional, uh, uh, many drug store for traditional Chinese herbs. So we can see this kanji, this means uh, uh, the drug already uh, produced, so you can, the patient can take as, as it is. You don't need to boil with water and uh, make some pears. And even in Singapore, we can also find um, many uh, drug stores for Chinese herbs. And in Japan, also we can find uh, the, the stores for Cambodia. So this picture is taken in what's more the Kiyoshi, so maybe everybody knows. <laughs> uh, almost, uh, I think more than 100 uh, kind of uh, Kamboyaku are in, uh, in sale in uh, Matsumoto Kiyoshi. So if you go to this store, you can please have a look. Uh, so from the beginning of the uh, 19th century, uh, modern medicine was de developed in Western country. So the difference between traditional medicine and uh, modern medicine is that traditional medicine just use a crude, crude uh, extract from the plants or animals or mineral. But the modern medicine, they use active uh, component with uh, exact uh, structure and uh, very clear property. Um, so the first modern medicine, uh, morphine, is, was uh, isolated from uh, opium in, uh, 1980, uh, in 1803, so almost uh, 200 years ago, uh, by a German uh, chemist. So this is a very uh, effective pain cleaner. So even now, so uh, we can also find the application of morphine in hospitals. 
So unlike uh, traditional medicine, mainly based on experience, the discovery of modern medicine uh, consists of uh, scientific research, screening, and uh, clinic clinical trials, and uh, finally uh, mass production by uh, drug companies. Uh, however, at, this, at that time, Chinese people didn't know what is science and research. So China, uh, until now, so, um, China <coughs> also Um, Chinese, uh, Chinese uh, pharmaceutical industries is still very weak. So we can see the top uh, 50 pharma company of last year. So U United States has 16 companies. Japan has eight companies. And even India has one company. But for China, zero. However, during uh, these years, uh, Chinese scientists made some uh, important breakthrough uh, in modernization of uh, Chinese herbs. So as you know, <coughs> the Nobel Prize in Physi uh, Physiology and Medicine was awarded to these three scientists. So the last one, uh, the, the last scientist is from China, Yu Yu Tu. So, her uh, contribution is uh, the invention of a uh, novel therapy against uh, malaria. So what is malaria? Malaria is a type of uh, very serious uh, tropic disease transfected by mosquitoes. Uh, in, in South America, uh, Africa, uh, South Asia, and the Southeast Asia, um, Millions of people are suffering from malaria every day. And uh, it's also caused uh, many people died. Mm, in 1967, the Chinese government launched a project for seeking a new anti-malaria anti drug. Uh, this is a, a project for it's a very secret project so for army. Uh, because uh, at that time, so Vietnam, those uh, Vietnam have uh, has a, had a war against the United States. And the uh, China, Chinese government supports uh, the Vietnam, those of Vietnam. So during the war, many Vietnam uh, soldiers uh, died from uh, malaria. So the leader of uh, those uh, Vietnam asked uh, their leader of China uh, to uh, develop uh, some anti-malaria drug for them. So under this background, so this project 523 was launched. Uh, so there are more than 500 Chinese scientists are involved in this project, including Tu Yu Yu. Tu and her uh, uh, teams uh, looked for prescription of malaria from traditional Chinese uh, literatures. So one of the prescription uh, in this book described that uh, Qing Hao, this, this plant called Qing Hao. Qing Hao can be used for malaria treatment. However, when uh, the research the found uh, use uh, this uh, Qing Hao to treat the, the patient. They found the result is uh, not stable. Sometimes they get uh, very, very good efficacy, but sometimes they did not. They did not. And uh, to uh, read this sentence, and they found that probably uh, the process for extract uh, Qing Qing Hao from this plant is very important uh, because uh, usually uh, Chinese people use uh, water to boil the, the plant to extract the, uh, uh, co uh, the uh, effective component from, uh, from this drug. But uh, 
uh, to think uh, probably the temperature is too high and the high temperature destroy the, the uh, chemical structure of the effective component. So finally, he decided to use a uh, ether to extract this Qing Hao. And uh, they, uh, they successfully isolate the component and uh, uh, identified the chemical structure of uh, this compound. So they call this Qing Hao Su in 1972. Uh, but uh, at that time, uh, because this is uh, one of the top secrets, so they cannot publish uh, any paper. And uh, after seven years, they just uh, published the uh, paper in Chinese. Um, and the tool's name is, is not, uh, was not on the paper. So the, 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 the author's name is the group of scientists for develop, uh, for a discovery of uh, anti-malaria drugs. So, <coughs> but, uh, so based on the chemical structure of Qing Hao Su, a group of uh, uh, scientists in the United States uh, complete the total synthesis through 20 step uh, reactions. The results were published in JEX in uh, 1983. And currently, a number of uh, pharmaceutical companies, both in China and uh, in, the, in this in Switzerland, and this is in France, uh, are producing Qing Hao Su, saving millions of uh, lives every year. <coughs> in 20th century, the drug di discovery moved to a nano era. So in 1959, uh, Professor, Professor Feynman uh, gave his uh, famous lecture. Uh, there is uh, plenty of room at the bottom. Uh, starting the research of tech, uh, nanotechnology. So what is nanotechnology? Nanotech nanotechnology is a research uh, in telescale, so from one nanometer to 100 nanometer. Uh, so after that, so many people are, are focused on the research of nanotechnology, not only in chemistry, but also in physics and even in medicine. So the combination of uh, nanotechnology and uh, uh, medicine generate uh, a new uh, Medicine, med medicinal matter called uh, nanomedicine. So we can see uh, dendrimers, polymer, uh, polymers, and the matter nanoparticles, and the nanocrystals. So all of them can be used as uh, nanomedicine. And the size is uh, comparable to some biological uh, species, species. For example, the uh, antibody has a size of about 12 nanometer. And we can see the, uh, the dendrimers, the size is in less than 10 nanometers. So uh, we, can, we can use uh, this kind of uh, very small uh, particles to uh, uh, interact with uh, antibody and uh, uh, produce some uh, therapeutic effect. Uh, the application of nanomedicine in uh, there are two uh, main applications. The first one is uh, uh, bioimaging. Uh, so the nanoparticles can uh, act as an imaging agent. And uh, right now, the uh, nanoparticles uh, has already uh, applied in X ray computed uh, tomography. We call this CT in the hospital and uh, uh, magnetic resonance imaging, MRI. So these two are very common in the hospital for, uh, for diagnosis of diseases. And uh, uh, also the near infrared fluorescence uh, from the nanoparticle can be used for, for, for imaging. And the ultrasound imaging and the 
quite recently, photoacoustic uh, imaging are also used for uh, the, the diag diagnosis of uh, cancer. Uh, so some uh, nanoparticles uh, can even pass through the blood-brain barrier and go into the human's uh, brain. So if there, if, uh, there is any uh, brain tumor, probably we can use nanoparticle to uh, image it, and uh, then uh, we can do the uh, surgery precisely. And uh, the second application of nanomedicine is therapy. Just as I said, so uh, the size of uh, nano nanomedicine is uh, very, very small. It can go into the uh, blood uh, vessel of a uh, human and uh, act as a nanorobot for surgery. So probably in the future, uh, doctors uh, don't need to open the patient's body. They just inject some uh, nanorobot into the blood vessel, and the, this smart uh, nanorobot can, can find the cancer or some other uh, uh, disease and uh, to kill the, the cells. And the other uh, application uh, for therapy is uh, nanoparticles. Nanoparticles can act as a carrier for drug delivery. So as we know, uh, so the, uh, when we take uh, drugs, so only uh, a little amount of drug can be uh, can, can go to the part, can go to the diseases part. But if we use a nanoparticle as a carrier, uh, it can uh, uh, target the disease part, for example, cancer, and then uh, send a lot of uh, therapeutic agent into the cancer cells and uh, uh, effectively kill the cancer cells. And also, this uh, nanoparticle can prevent the drug resist resistant effect of cancer cells. So, uh, right now, so many groups are focused on uh, this drug delivery using nanomedicine. But for the uh, nanorobot, so right now, is, I think it's too early. Uh, more research and, uh, uh, yeah, more research is needed for this nanorobot. So in recent five years, we can see that the paper about nanomedicine uh, published the <coughs> in, in, in the journals. Uh, I searched this uh, topic, nanomedicine, uh, from 2010 to 2015 uh, by Web of Science. So as you can see in this picture, uh, the United, United States scientists uh, published them. Uh, many papers, more than 1,000 papers. And the second one, second place is China. So China people also <coughs> uh, spend a lot of money and uh, spend a lot of time to, uh, to uh, re do the research in uh, nanomedicine. Uh, but uh, we can see Japan is uh, number 11. So probably we need more more, more people, more groups to, <coughs> to do research in this uh, nanomedicine. And in China, <coughs> there are two uh, national institutes for the research of nanomedicine. The first one is uh, <coughs> the Nano Center for Nanoscience and Technology. The second one is the Chinese Academy of Science. So there are many uh, excellent uh, researchers are uh, doing uh, the research uh, in these two institutes. So most of uh, the research, uh, uh, they come back from the United States. So they get PhD, or they did a postdoc in United States for several years. And uh, when they come back to China, they just uh, uh, continue their work. So one, uh, one professor in my university, his name is uh, Zhuang Liu. So you can see his publication of this year, so just from January to May. So he already published more 
more than, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven good papers. So anyway, so in China, there are many young researchers like uh, Zhuang Liu. So the competition is war, also <laughs> very, very serious. And uh, finally, uh, I want to talk about the clinic translation of another medicine because uh, uh, the research uh, should be used in clinic. Otherwise, the research is uh, just a research. So uh, in the medical science, we call this uh, from bench to bedside. Uh, so this is an example of a recent clinic translation in China. So um, maybe Kuma Sensei, you know this gadolinium in, in captured uh, funerary. So it's a kind of uh, uh, carbon nanomaterials. And uh, recently, uh, this group, Professor Zhao Yuliang's group at, at Chinese Academ Academy of Science, uh, they found uh, the gadolinium uh, uh, encaptured fuller fuller nanomaterials can act as a non toxic breast cancer stem cell uh, inhibitor. So it can uh, prevent the growth of uh, this breast uh, cancer stem cells. And it can um, also uh, uh, inhibit the metastasis. And uh, so after publishing this paper, uh, they filed a patent and uh, uh, decided to uh, uh, do the clinic translation. So they uh, launched a, a project in Beijing and uh, attract, successfully attracted a, a large amount of money from the government. Uh, probably within three or four years, they were produce uh, this kind of a drug for the clinic, uh, of, uh, clinic trials. So if the clinic trials uh, result is good, and uh, they will move to the mass uh, production. And uh, he is one of the visiting professor of uh, my, uh, my department. So, <coughs> Uh, I want to summarize uh, this part and uh, give some uh, outlook. So first, uh, the traditional Chinese medicine contributes a lot to the medical care of human health. And during these several thousand years, not only in China, but also in Japan, in Korea, in Vietnam, in Singapore, so all over the world. And uh, second, Chinese herbs are a big tre uh, treasury. The modernization of uh, which will produce more valuable drugs. Like Tu Yu Yu, he found the Qing Hao Su for, uh, for <coughs> malaria treatment. So probably we can find more uh, effect effective drugs from uh, Chinese herbs. And uh, third, uh, China, I think China need to enhance is a uh, pharmaceutic uh, industry because it's too weak, as you can see. So even India has a very uh, successful company, but China doesn't have. And uh, finally, the research of nanomedicine in China is very active. Uh, we publish many papers, but I think more attention should be paid to <coughs> clinic uh, translation. So we, in the future, we should use this nanomedicine, not only in the lab, but also in the, ho in the, in the hospital. And uh, finally, I want to briefly uh, introduce you Suzhou City and uh, Suzhou University. So Suzhou is uh, one of the major uh, city located in uh, East China. It's very close to Shanghai. And uh, it has a very long history of over 2,500 years. Uh, so it's a former economic and uh, cultural center, center of China. Uh, after 
and I, after 1860, <coughs> so Suzhou is uh, uh, replaced by Shanghai. So now Shanghai is the, the economic uh, center of China. And currently, the city has a population of about uh, 5.3 million. Uh, I think more than Kyoto. <laughs> Suzhou so is a very uh, famous for uh, its uh, uh, classic gardens. So because uh, uh, 100 years ago, so many rich men live, uh, live in this city. So, and uh, they built a lot of uh, beautiful gardens. Um, except for garden, so the corners, corners in Suzhou is also famous. So. If you go to Suzhou, you can get on the boat and uh, you can travel uh, in, in, in this country. Uh, and also the temple. So many Japanese know uh, this Hansanji, right? Kansanji. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. So uh, each year, many Japanese uh, tourists uh, uh, go to Suzhou and visit this temple because uh, this, uh, there is uh, a story uh, between China and Japan about the, uh, this, uh, this, this temple. Yeah. So it's a very nice uh, city to, uh, for, for tourists, for tourism. And uh, now China, uh, Suzhou is a, also a modern city. So uh, at night, we can see it's very beautiful, just like Hong Kong or Shanghai. I think uh, or it's a very modern. It's not just uh, historic, but it's also a modern city. And about the culture of Suzhou. <coughs> Suzhou is uh, also rich in uh, colorful, rich, uh, uh, colorful culture. So the Quenchu Opera. Uh, so we call this the mother of uh, World Chinese Opera. So this is a story of uh, our very old story. We call this um, Mu Dan Ting. Uh, so this story is uh, very popular in China. Probably you don't know, but if you are interested, you can you can just uh, read some books about this. And uh, uh, Suzhou Ping Tan. Is a <coughs> uh, local mu uh, music and the world performance uh, tell, uh, also tell uh, old stories. So when uh, the ladies uh, play ping tan, they will always pick the pipa and uh, sing a song. Uh, but for for men, so they use a different inf instrument. I, I don't know the name, but uh, yeah. For, for ladies, they always use uh, pipa. And uh, so the uh, silk uh, embroidery is uh, also famous, famous in China. So it's uh, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the best souvenirs for the foreigners. So many people went to Suzhou and uh, buy this uh, handcraft. And uh, next, I want to introduce uh, uh, my university, Suzhou University. Uh, the main campus of Suzhou University is located in the uh, east of uh, ancient Suzhou city. So you can see the river. This river surrounds the city. And uh, on the bank of the moat, so just on the bank of the moat. And uh, this campus is among uh, one of the most beautiful uh, campus in China. Uh, but this university is not funded by Chinese. Uh, it's funded by uh, American modest in, 90, uh, in, uh, in 1900. So the first the chancellor name is uh, Dr. Yang J. Allen. And so you know, uh, after 1949, uh, the new government changed the, the style. So part of the 
Suzhou University moved to Taiwan. So right now they still have the uh, old name, Dongwu University. But uh, uh, for us, the, 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 the name of the university already changed to Suzhou University. So this, this university uh, is a very historic university. Like Tsinghua University, there are also two Tsinghua Universities. One is in Beijing and the other one is in, in Taiwan. Also, we can find the same name of the university in Taiwan, also yes. Suzhou University in Taiwan. Uh, right now, they use this, uh, this name. Dong, they Dong. changed the name. Uh, they, they used the original name. We, we changed the name. Yeah. And then you can look at the campus. So owing to the, the Methodist background and the Suzhou local culture, so you can find many historic buildings with either, with either uh, Western style and also the uh, Chinese style. So in the, uh, for Chinese building, you can always see a small river and a a bridge across the river and a little house. This is one of the typical uh, building in Suzhou. And also you can see that this is a, a tower for bell, bell tower. This is a bell tower. And about uh, academics, uh, Suzhou University is uh, one of the key a comprehensive university in China with uh, 12 major subjects, including uh, philosophy, economics, law, literature, history, science, engineering, medicine, management, and arts. So currently, uh, Suzhou University uh, uh, has have, have more than uh, 22,000 undergraduate, undergraduate students and more than 12,000 graduate students. And this university also attracted uh, more than 2,000 foreign students. And uh, finally, so before ending this uh, lecture, I would like to thank Professor Kumas for invitation and the generous, uh, generous uh, support from Kyoto University, the permission from my university and uh, Wikipedia for materials of this PPT. And uh, lastly, I want to thank Ms. Uh, Ogino for poster design and uh, attracting so many attendees here. Thank you, thank you very much.